Hi guys, it's Crystal. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make this 3D door hanger pumpkin that says welcome with chipboard. We have fabric as well as wood veneer. So let's go ahead and get started. Today I'm using the Cricut Maker 3 and here is the design I'm going to be using. This is actually two different files that are right here inside of Cricut Design Space. I took this pumpkin and then I just contoured. So then I duplicate that a few times and then I brought in this welcome. So I'll show you guys that here in just a minute. Today we're going to be using this heavy chipboard which is two 0 0.0 millimeters thick. Look at this stuff. It's super duper thick. So we're going to be using two sheets of this. That's going to give it like that 3D effect. We're going to be using the wood veneer here for our, you know, welcome. You could definitely use some more chipboard if you wanted to. You could use felt, all sorts of things. Today I'm going to be using fabric for the inside piece here. You could do patterns, all sorts of stuff. So I've got some twine here and then I'm going to be using the pink mat along with the purple mat. The blades that I'm going to be using are the rotary blade, which is this one right here. So we're going to be using this one as well as the knife blade. Both of these are purchased separate with the Maker 3. So we're going to go ahead and use both of these today as well as the deep cut blade, which is black. All right, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is show you here the layers. So I have my welcome layer, which is going to be the wood veneer. And then this layer right here is the one that I contoured. I brought this in. I'll have it linked down below so you can find it. I contoured it to create these two layers back here. One's for chipboard, one's for fabric. The other one's for chipboard again. We're going to hit on the map. And then here we go. Now I'm showing you guys with the iPad because I want to show you guys in case you make this mistake. You cannot cut chipboard with the iPad because these are longer projects. You need to use your desktop or your laptop. So I'm going to start out using the iPad and I'm going to show you once we get to the chipboard that it's not going to let us go any further. So I'm going to go ahead and choose our fabric. So I'm going to go to all materials here. This first layer here is the cotton. So I'm just going to type in cotton and that's going to be our cotton fabric. So once you choose this, that at that point, it's going to tell us to go ahead and load that rotary blade. So let's go ahead and cut down a piece of this fabric. Now, once again, you could definitely use some super cute patterns. I really love the way that this was kind of like a watercolor effect. You could find these anywhere locally, really. Um, you could do felt. You could definitely just paint on it if you wanted to. You could use pattern cardstock. You could use adhesive vinyl, all sorts of things. Possibilities are endless. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and load that rotary blade here. I'm going to remove our fine point blade. You want to load this in where the gears are touching each other. And then we're going to go ahead and load our fabric mat, which is the pink one here. We're going to load it right underneath those two white feet and hit the load button. So our rotary blade is going to go in here. You're going to bring it all the way in. Now, one thing that I like to do when I first get my maker is I like to calibrate my blade. So if you got any extras like, you know, your um, rotary or your knife blade, I like to calibrate those right away. So I'm going to go ahead and unload this and we're just going to remove that excess just like so. This is perfect for applique. You could do all sorts of fun stuff with these. So I'm going to go ahead and set that aside and then we're going to go ahead and get our purple mat. We're going to use this for the rest of the time. So our first two pieces here are chipboard and I'm going to go ahead and load that 2.0 chipboard here. There is other chipboard too. You could use the thinner stuff. You could use wood. I'm going to go ahead and type out. I'm going to start trying to type out chipboard. And so you're going to notice that it's not going to give me the option for that heavy chipboard. So I'm going to try to pull it up and then I'm going to hit back and I'm going to try to type in heavy chipboard and it's still not going to cap up. Even if you hit all and it does show up, it's not going to let you click it. And you're going to say, oh, what's happening? You need to switch over to your laptop and then finish the project from here. So what you're going to do is connect your machine. So I'm going to connect my maker and then I'm going to select my material. I'm going to come up to browse all material right over here. And now whenever I type in chipboard, you're going to notice that it's going to pop right up. So if you run into that snag, that is what is going on. You need to be on the desktop or the laptop. So it's going to tell us to load our knife blade. And so we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and head on over to our machine and load this knife blade. This is the blade that we're using now. Once again, you want to load it with the gears against the gears. So the plastic will be facing you. So we're just going to go ahead and unload that rotary blade and put in our knife blade just like so. See the, these are the two blades that I always highly recommend having on hand. They are amazing for the maker. All right, so 
one thing that you may want to do is get some tape here. This is a very low tack tape. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and apply this. You don't want nothing with too strong of a tape. I like to go ahead and add this to either two sides or all four sides, just right up against the edge. Just little small pieces. It doesn't have to go all the way across, just in case as this is cutting, because it will go over and over again. If it shifts, it's not going to. It's kind of going to help hold it in place. It's an extra security blanket, if you will. Um, so once you have this, you're going to go ahead and move your star wheels. If you notice that your machine brings your mat in and says that you need to insert your 12 inch mat, this is your problem. You have forgot to move those star wheels. They are all going to go all the way to the right. Every single star wheel will go all the way to the right. And then you're going to load it and now you're going to be ready to go. I love being able to tell you guys these little things in case you guys run into these snags. All right. So we are ready to go. We're going to hit the play button there. And this is going to go ahead and cut it out. Now, the one thing about when you're working with heavy chipboard or the wood, it does take several passes. So it will get more and more pressure over time and continue to go more and more. Now, um, this is what your screen will look like. So you guys will see how many passes it'll let you know. And this is why you need to be on the laptop or desktop is it's a longer, you know, your iPad will fall asleep. All right. So, um, once you're done with this, if it's not completely cut out, you want to go ahead and hit the play button again and it'll pass, you know, one or two more times, whatever you need it to do. So always test that before you completely unload it. So I'm cutting out my second piece here. So I've already loaded it in and we're going to cut it out. All right. So let's go ahead in the meantime, while that continues to cut out, let's go over here and iron out my piece of fabric. So you could have already done this ahead of time. I'm just going to take my little small mini easy press here, and I'm just going to go ahead and smooth out, um, that little crease right there. Now, sometimes once you apply the glue and apply this down, it may work its way out, but I didn't want to take the risk. So I'm going to go ahead and smooth that down there. And then I want to go ahead and take some Mod Podge here and you could just take some adhesive, any sort of adhesive that you want to use. Um, you could definitely just use that to apply it to your backing. So I'm just going to go ahead and do one half of this first because this stuff does dry pretty quickly. So I'm just getting this on here, trying to smooth out as much as I can. We'll smooth the rest out with our fingers um, once I get the fabric on. So half of it, I'm going to go ahead and take my fabric here and then I'm going to go ahead and get this lined up nice and perfect. And then I'm going to smooth everything out. So we're just rubbing everything in. I'm going to fold it over and I'm going to go ahead and get the other side. So um, like I said, this stuff dries super duper fast. So you want to work pretty quickly. Um, you'll see here in just a second, I'll actually have to go back and readjust that stem because it needed a little bit more. So add a little bit more there, smooth it out. Look how pretty this looks. I love that, you know, watercolor effect, but this would be super cute with like a plaid pattern. Um, you know, like I said, you could do cardstock, you could do, you know, pattern vinyl. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and load that wood veneer. I don't need any tape with this. We're going to go ahead and type in wood, and you'll see natural wood veneer. You're going to choose that. Hit done. It's going to tell us to load that deep point blade. This is a black blade. I highly recommend you keep this on hand. Um, I use it with all my Cricut machines, so you'll see that here. I'm going to go ahead and load my material in, and then I'm going to go ahead and load in that blade. So it has a black housing here. You could definitely just get the blade and insert it into your regular one and switch them out. But I highly recommend just getting the housing. It's black. You can tell which one it is. All right. So once you've got that in there, we're just going to go ahead and hit go. So wood veneer, you can also use on your Cricut Explorer 3. So uh, you could definitely do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly cut this stuff out here. Now, there's several different colors too. I chose a darker one because I was going with black and I wanted it to really just pop that color. It would already had kind of like a background color, if you, if you make, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and line these up here. You guys can see even just with the, the natural color of the chipboard was super duper cute. You could do this in black. I'm doing mine in white and I'll kind of draw on some little um, accent pieces here in a second. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and cover all of this in white just to give it, um, you know, a background, if you will, for my brown and my green. I'm going to do it in a second on the stem. So I'm just doing almost like a wash. So it's kind of like a vintage. I'm not being absolutely perfect. I want to make sure I go all the way around and get inside all of these little cracks and stuff right here on the inside. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get me some of that brown paint as well as my green. All of these paints are super duper cheap and you can find them locally. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and dip right into the brown here and just get my stem. So once again, I'm almost doing like a, a dry brush. I barely have anything on. I kind of, I don't want it to be just all the way brown. I kind of want it to have almost like a washed out effect. Um, 
And then I'm going to go ahead and dip into that green and do this as well. So I've just been cleaning my brush in between. So once again, almost like a dry brush and I'm just kind of smoothing that out just like so. All right. So for the next thing, I'm going to take a smaller paintbrush here and I'm going to start to do that detail. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of go all the way around like this and just do whatever you want to. You could do this with a, um, a white gel pen. You could do it with a Sharpie. Um, and you definitely don't have to do this at all. It just kind of makes it pop even more. So I wasn't happy with that little bit of white. So I'm going to go ahead and take my Brown, wash that out and I'll move on to the other side while I wait for it to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a couple lines in here and then I'll go back over there. Now that my Brown, this paint dries pretty quickly on here and uh, so we're able to just kind of go backwards so now I'm happy with that so I'm gonna go ahead and take up some black so I can go ahead and go all the way around this and just kind of do like an outline I am in no means being absolutely perfect it kind of just adds to the effect so once again just feel free to do it however you would like so I just love the fact that the maker allows us to to cut such a big thick piece of chipboard it reminds me of wood and it's perfect for doing projects like this this would be cute to put on a sign as well so now what i'm doing here is i'm actually painting this right on top of that wood veneer the whole sheet that way i'm not having to try to do this with those small intricate pieces so before i um completely take it apart i'm just going to go ahead and paint everything i'm just doing it right there where the words are so once i'm done with this i'm going to go ahead and show you really quickly how this is going to line up see how cute this is once again you could do whatever color I could have done this yellow a darker orange um whatever you would like all right so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some adhesive use whatever adhesive you would like you could use a hot glue gun I'm just gonna use this glue here which is for multiple things so it, it's gonna adhere to that fabric very nicely all right so I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure I go over every single piece here we want to make sure it's gonna stick and then I'm going to just line it up. So we're going to go ahead and take this right on top. So this piece that I'm, I have in my hands, this is the design. So like I said, I contoured the other pieces out so it was one solid piece. Um, and this is where it all started with. And then I found the welcome. Once again, I'll have them all linked down below. So there you have it. How cute is this? You could do several different sizes like this um, and create a little back on it to have them kind of stand up and stuff on your, you know, shelving in the house and stuff like that too. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. So this wood veneer stuff cuts very nice. Uh, if you were doing a flat piece here like the pumpkin, you could definitely done this in vinyl also. So I'm going to go ahead and just carefully, I'm taking my weeding tool here and I'm being very slow. When it comes to wood veneer, it's very delicate. It's really cool to work with, but you want to be nice and slow. So I'm going to go ahead and take my pieces here and then I'm going to line them up where I want them. Look how cool this already looks. Super cute, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take that same adhesive and I'm going to glue these down. I just need a little bit of glue on each little piece that's going to touch. Um, since it's like a 3D, I don't need glue all the way across this thing. So whatever pieces are touching that outline of the pumpkin, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go back, quickly flip it over, trying to remember exactly where those were touching. And then uh, I'll just get some adhesive on there and then I can adjust once I have it down. So just like so, I'll flip it over and try to line everything back up. I really am in love with the way this came out. This would be super cool too on one of those big round circles that everybody does for the door hangers as well. Also would be super cute on a welcome sign that you may have outside. Just lots of ideas to do with this thing. All right, so we've got everything lined up looking good. So I'm loving the way that this is looking. I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of our way here and we are going to work on our next thing so I'm actually using this stiffen stuff here and I just wrapped it around a pencil I just took that twine there and I used some tape to hold down both sides and I sprayed it with that stiffen stuff set it aside and let it completely dry you could dry it faster with a hair um, hair dryer and then it creates these super cute curls which I'm going to use right here so that, see how cute that is so I'll tape that on the back here in just a second um, absolutely love using that stuff so I highly recommend um, trying that out all right so I'm going to go ahead and cut this away just like so so I'm just creating my own ribbon. You could use ribbon, but I'm just using some fabric here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the pattern face up and I'm going to tie it just like I was tying my tennis shoes. So just like that. Very easy, right? All right. So now we are ready to just kind of straighten this bow up and then I'm going to trim off any excess. Just doing my little angle here. And there you have it. Super, super cute. So all we have left now is just going on the back. 
I'm in love with it. Super cute. So let's go ahead and flip it over and figure out where we want this to go. I'm actually going to trim off this little excess pieces because where you have to tape it down, you just want to trim that off to make it look a lot more clean cut. All right. So now what I could have done too before I tied my ribbon, my bow, I could have set this down first and then tied the bow and the bow would have held it on. So, but I'm just showing you another option of taping it on the back. Now, one thing that I would recommend is cutting out another piece of this pumpkin, just like I did with a fabric, but with cardstock, but I would mirror the cardstock. That way I could, once I got done with the tape on the back, I could go ahead and apply that pattern cardstock on the back and it would cover up that tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out about how big of this twine I need and then I will cut that down and we're going to use some tape once again to tape this down. You could use hot glue, whatever you would like. Um, now for me, I'm not going to cover my back up because it's going to be up against my door and you're not going to see it. But if you were going to sell it, I would highly recommend that you just take a piece of pattern cardstock, pattern vinyl, anything you'd like and get that covered up. So there you have it. How super cute is this? Let me know down below if you guys are going to try to make this um, and let me know what you guys think about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you did, please hit the like button down below and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.